Hey everyone, I got an email from Amazon like most of you guys probably do all the time um, asking about a device that I bought from them and how it works and someone else had a question about it. So I thought I'd put together a quick little video about my experience with the uh, VFD that I bought from Amazon. VFD is short for, of course, Variable Frequency Drive. And this is for my old Powermatic bandsaw. I bought this guy on uh, an auction earlier this year and of course it's a three-phase uh, bandsaw and I had to convert it to single phase because I don't have the luxury of three-phase in my home shop. Um, but anyway, I thought I'd just go through it just a little bit and, and show you what I did and how well it worked and, and uh, maybe that'll help somebody else out along the way. I do want to say that I'm not a licensed electrician or anything like that so I did this all on my own. I do have some experience with electrical and electronics, but um, definitely not a licensed electrician. So this is something you'll have to research and do on your own. But anyway, here we go. This is an old Powermatic bandsaw. It's a great old saw. Um, heavy duty, industrial. Uh, it's got a bandsaw blade welder, um, variable speed, and of course it's got high range, low range. Nice table, adjustable bed, and everything like that. So it was in pretty rough shape when I bought it, but we're getting it cleaned up pretty good. But anyway, here's what I want to show you. I'm giving you an overview of the electrical changes I made. This is actually the final configuration with the new electronics and, and such on it. And you saw the control panel on the other side. But we'll go through these individually and just show you. First thing I'm going to do is... Um, show you the components that I took off of it. So here are the components that I took out of it. Of course, your three-phase starter and contactor, and it's got a little transformer to drop down 110 volts for some other control circuitry. And then, of course, it has the big uh, start-stop button. So uh, all that had to come out. So I bought this uh, variable frequency drive off Amazon. It's pretty reasonable. I think it was only about 120 or $130. You can buy the extension cable, it's just a flat ribbon cable routed over to where you want. So we'll go around and look at the other side and show you the finished control panel. So this section right here is where um, the original start-stop button was for the contactor. I just took that whole unit out, built a new face panel, um, and remoted the control panel. This is the control for the variable frequency drive. It's on-off. Um, you know, and then speed control. Um, also, you'll notice I have this unit here. It looks like a breaker, but it's actually not a breaker. Um, it's just a switch. And if you read close, it says it is not for overcurrent protection. It is just a switch. And that's why I've labeled it on off switch. You don't ever want to use a breaker as a switch. So I added that switch because I didn't like the fact that when you push stop on the VFD, there, it still had power on the VFD and so it wouldn't completely shut off. So I put in um, this switch just so I can actually turn the power off to the whole unit. Otherwise the fan sits there and runs the whole time. I'm going to walk you through just the power here one more time. As you can see, um, I've got it plugged into a single phase um, 240 30 amp circuit. Now, I did run the neutral in with it because I wanted to tap a 110 line off for some lights over the cutting area, but you really don't need the neutral unless you want 110. Anyway, that comes into this little distribution panel that I bought from Home Depot. It's, it's basically just a disconnect. I put a 20 amp double pull breaker in there and that breaks the both legs of the 220 single phase. And then out of that it goes over to the switch that I showed you on the other side that is just a power on power off switch. And then of course we've got the VFD here. So now I'll give you a brief demonstration of how it actually runs. I've got it running in low range right now. You can see right there I've got it over in low range. And I've got the speed set at about 250. You can dial the speed up, with, up or down with this dial once the machine's running. You don't want to do it without it running. So again, um, to turn on the power to the VFD, I just flipped the switch there. So now you can see the VFD is up and running, ready to go. 
all you have to do is push run and it'll start spinning up you notice you can hear it running it's coming up to frequency when it gets to 60 it's at full speed so there it's at full speed now you can adjust the speed on it right here to change it down or bring it back up real easy so I can change the speed of the bandsaw there or I can do it down here with this control so it's kind of hard to tell that it's running but but it is running it runs nice and quiet every now and again you'll see the seam of the bandsaw blade coming through the only other thing I guess I really want to point out is that um, I did use the uh, original three-phase motor because that's what you do with a VFD is you hook the three-phase motor to the one side of the VFD and single-phase power to the other side and as you can see um, I push stop to stop the motor and it has stops and so this is the mode it'll stay in as long as you have power to it so rather than unplugging it from the wall again I put the power switch and I can just kill it there now they don't recommend killing the power um, like that to the unit when the machine is running and that's why I elected for a switch rather than an emergency kill switch anyway if you have any questions let me know um, I'll be glad to answer whatever I can thanks